we are going to talk about some snake oil. Mm hmm. Rafi's Rambles. Rafi's Rambles. Rafi's Rambles. <laughs> Hola, you amazing artists, and welcome to the studio. Today, I wanted to talk about something a little bit different, and it might kind of be a rant, but it has to do with putting yourself out there in a genuine way and really understanding why it is that you want to put yourself out there. So as many of you guys know, I'm writing a book, I'm putting yourself out there as Rogue, detailing the stuff about putting myself out there and what I'm willing to compromise for fame and status, which, uh, spoiler alert, I'm not willing to compromise anything. Over the years, I started to identify that marketing was a shit show, especially when you look at some of the stupid shit that goes viral. Several years ago, I decided that I was going to get to the bottom of it and went down a rabbit hole that just left a bad taste in my mouth. But it shed light on why things go viral and become popular. Now here's the thing, I didn't come out of that experience and put together like a marketing course, so don't worry, I'm not trying to sell you on some proven method or get rich quick. I don't pay for ads trying to convince artists that uh, I have all the answers because I don't. And neither do the idiots that claim to be artists, but they're actually making their money from selling expensive marketing courses. Now I'm not stating that you can easily predict what kind of stuff will Will go viral but honestly it's not that hard and at the end of the day you have to ask yourself if you're willing to go there I had to stop and ask myself am I selling art or snake oil am I being real am I trying to pull one over on people who trust me am I willing to lie fearmonger gossip spread misinformation or cause a divide in order to become known no Especially when I don't have to. Sure, it's the quickest way and easiest. And in fact, most people will just say, it's just marketing, grow a spine. That's the same shit that people told us when we decided to leave Etsy because they wanted us to lie to our customers and tell them that the shipping was free, even though it was a blatant lie. Like they were like, it's just marketing. To roll in the price and tell people that it's free it's just bullshit. So the responses were like, take a marketing course. It's just marketing. Everybody knows that it's not really free. And in my mind, I was like, yeah, maybe, but I don't care about that. I don't care about what people know. I know it's not free. I know that it's not free. Also, I think for myself, I don't buy into the idea that some authority, whether it's a company or, or somebody in academics or, or whatever, that the authority figure knows it all and that I should just blindly follow whatever they say because they have an opinion about this or that. Oh, it's okay. Everybody else is doing it. And the thing is that I'm not selling snake oil. I'm selling something that has substance. I am creating something that is meant to empower and bring color into the world with everything that I do, whether it is videos, whether it is my artwork, whether it is music, writing, whatever it is, I am selling something that is a part of me. So at the end of the day, like I was like, well, what is marketing? How am I supposed to market myself without being a jerk? Enter Clark Stanley's snake oil liniment. With great fanfare and showmanship, Stanley reached into the old sack and he pulled out a rattlesnake, slid it open, and plunged it into a boiling pot of water. He told the story of an ancient Hopi remedy learned by cowboys of the Wild West as the snake fat rose to the top of the pot. People watched in awe as he skimmed it off, then mixed it with a slew of secret ingredients and bottled it in glass vials embossed with the name Clark Stanley. He apprised a growing crowd of the miracles that snake oil had performed and how Clark Stanley's snake oil liniment was good for everything a liniment ought to be good for. Okay, so let's stop there for a moment. There's so much more going on here than meets the eye. And this is, this is where I started to really look at marketing. Clark Stanley is creating an emotional experience that is worth examining a little bit closer. The scene was at the World Expo in Chicago, and many people had never really seen a real rattlesnake being murdered by what they considered a real cowboy. His presentation was a spectacle that caused word of mouth to spread and grow within the crowd and beyond. He added to the allure by telling the story 
of the mysterious Hopi people teaching this ancient remedy to cowboys. Most people only knew about cowboys through fictional stories in Penny Dreadfuls, dime novels, and pulp magazines. And Clark Stanley also published hundreds of pamphlets, tr The True Life of the Far West by an American cowboy better known as the Rattlesnake King, where he told stories as a self-described cowboy from Texas who had spent years conquering the West. He detailed fantastic stories of his adventures, and they also happened to describe the magical powers of his snake oil liniment. Posters and flyers of the Rattlesnake King surrounded the fair, containing images of Clark Stanley surrounded by snakes. These also boasted the miracle cures of the wonderful pain-destroying compound. According to his advertising, the liniment was good for pain, lameness, it was said to cure rheumatism, neuralgia, sciatica, lame back, lumbago, contracted muscles, toothache, sprains, swelling, frostbite, chill, banes, and sore throat, and insect bites and reptile bites. For the non-skeptical onlooker, it was an emotional journey of feeding wonderment and fantasy of cowboys, mysticism, and adventure. The miracle cure of snake oil was something that had been rumored about since the Chinese brought it into the country and people were ripe for miracle cures. This was a time where people would do anything to avoid the pain of living in the 1800s that had little focus on sanitation and health. Not only that, but think about it. By purchasing the snake oil, now you were part of this epic adventure. The thing is, he had consistent branding, repetitive, bold advertising, glowing testimonials, captivating storytelling, and a prime location, and he controlled the narrative. Of course, Chinese immigrants had bought traditional snake oil remedy to the U.S. during the gold rush, and it was made of uh, from Chinese water snakes that were high in omega-3s. So it was pretty legit for reducing inflammation. Clark Stanley, on the other hand, was selling bottles of mineral oil, beef fat, red pepper, and turpentine. It didn't even have rattlesnake in it, which rattlesnake isn't even high in omega-3s. You might think that people were much more gullible back then, but we aren't that much better at spotting false information today. We're constantly bombarded with the stuff, and most of it is not on the level. And here's a few examples that you might not expect. You guys have heard of Dannon's Activia Yogurt claimed to be clinically and scientifically proven to boost your immune system and able to help regulate digestion? Mm -mm. Kellogg's claimed that Rice Krispies had immune boosting properties at one point. Nope. Kellogg's also claimed that mini wheats improved children's attentiveness, memory, and other cognitive functions. No. New Balance, if you guys remember, came out with the True Balance toning shoes that claim muscle activation in the glutes, quads, hamstrings, calves, which in turn burn calories. No. Olay Definitely Eye Cream shows a former 60-year-old model looking wrinkle-free and young in her banner ads because she uses the cream. <laughs> These were all snake oil claims, and they got busted. Whether it's an obscure or well-known company, several companies get in trouble for false advertising every year. That's right, even companies that you trust or might be loyal to. We buy for emotional reasons. We buy for the security of feeling safe and healthy. Knowing that the bottle with the glacier on it is better than the tap water that is in it. Why? Because of the psychology of marketing. Bottled water doesn't actually do marketing for bottled water. It markets a healthier, safer alternative to tap water. Despite sometimes using tap water in like 50% of bottled water out there, they've been so good with their marketing that you might even feel slightly upset that I'm saying that bottled water is not better than tap water. Chances are you've heard stories of the dangers of tap water and how you're gambling every time you drink out of the tap. Rarely does anyone hear the stories of bottled water being recalled for non-viral hepatitis, E. coli, or even high levels of arsenic. Marketing bottled water is about controlling the narrative that causes people to act. Fear of the danger of tap water is the actual marketing campaign that is rarely communicated openly in an ad. It happens out of focus, in the background, and from sources that seem unrelated to the bottle manufacturer. These are the lines between the lines. This is what marketing actually is. So how does knowing about this crap, these lies, this stuff, uh, help you to put yourself out there as an artist. First, 
As a creative, you are vastly powerful when it comes to spreading your voice to the world. Stop putting yourself down and buying into the subpar marketing crap that you hear and you read about because a lot of it is based on these stupid marketing tactics that are out there in order to trick and manipulate people. Check in with yourself. Make sure that you agree with the stuff that you're reading. Understand that Clark Stanley's tactics are, they're not evil. It was the deception behind it. He was selling bullshit. He was selling snake oil. If you want to get recognized as an artist, First and foremost, you have to create art, right? That's the first thing. Then put yourself out there by any means necessary within reason for you and persist through the bullshit. Put yourself out there by any means within reason. And you might be wondering how, Rafi. Posters, flyers, postcards, thank you letters, thank you emails, gifts, local events, art walks, art festivals, galleries, businesses, websites, social media, blogs, business cards, catalogs, visits of open studios, gallery showings, pop-up studios, yard and art sales, scavenger hunts. There are so many things that you could do. I know an artist who contacted one of the businesses at a parking lot, at a busy parking lot during COVID, and she set up a booth and she did great. Are you engaging? Do you enjoy what you do? Are you excited about sharing your art? Are you curious, full of wonder, willing to challenge yourself? And most importantly, are you willing to persist and stay honest? Are you taking control of your narrative or are you desperately letting someone else dictate how you should put yourself out there? Grow your confidence in who you are, why you create, what you create, and why you're sharing it with the world. That will give you the foundation to put yourself out there authentically and powerfully Powerfully. Everything else is just tactics, and there are thousands of them out there. But if you're standing in your own confidence, then you're like a force of nature. And really, that's the work. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. As stated before, I'm working on the Rogue Artist Guide for putting yourself out there and where I talk about marketing yourself authentically as an artist. There are some sections that I've written that aren't going to make it into the book, like this particular section, uh, because they're not powerful they're not empowering enough and they don't go with the story yet uh and i also don't want to self-publish a 500 page book they're still good hence this video i wanted to share that with you so hopefully you enjoyed the section of the book that got cut out uh which is snake oil versus selling art and a quick announcement for the month of may is that i'm focused fully on the final editing of the book which means that you'll probably see me again in june the pre-release of uh the money book and the marketing book is supposed to happen for indiegogo supporters sometime in july and i want to make sure that all my t's are crossed and my eyes are doubted dotted Doubted. And a big shout out to our amazing patrons. Honestly, without them, I think we would have lost our minds in the entire process of working on this book. And they've been hugely supportive and have given me tons and tons of feedback. And yeah, thank you guys. And I guess that's it. So I'll probably be gone for May. You might see some videos from Klee. Uh, I, she took lead in the last video, which is super freaking awesome. So you might be able to look forward to that. And thank you so much, you guys. You guys are absolutely freaking amazing. And I totally adore you. And if you like this and you want to watch more like this, just click right over here to subscribe. And I guess that's it. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.